Hello and welcome to a new video on my channel. Uh, this is um, kind of an opinionated video and it's the top 10. This is reflecting back on Battle of the Beasts and uh, this is my top 10 favourite battles from that series, from series 1 of Battle of the Beasts. Um, I'm your host Adam Ferns and I was the person that hosted Battle of the Beasts anyway. Uh, so this is entirely my opinion given my top 10 battles from that series and I just realised I wrote down my top 10 but I didn't actually list them down with numbers. So uh, yeah, hold on, G give me time. <laughs> uh, whilst I'm sorting out a list I shall go over the places, the placements of the seasons that participate in that series. Basically the in order of the seasons getting eliminated from the tournament. So, as you know, only 13 seasons took place in that battle, uh, in this Series 1. And last place was Series 4, followed by Series 13, uh, Amulus of Avantia, Warriors Road, and 11th place means Series 6. The World of Chaos was all eliminated in Round 2. Um, three series seasons being eliminated, eliminated in Round 2. Bit surprising, but um, not majorly bad because um one is a bad series with beasts anyway one is an okay one and one is a phenomenal one so it's kind of interesting that two of them got eliminated but series four yeah i see why 10th place is series 12 the darkest the darkest hour ninth for series three the dark realm eight for series no 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 no, no. i'm not going to go to eight uh series 12 and series three got eliminated in round four well, round three, um, they got eliminated um, kind of close to each other, actually. Uh, I believe the last beast stand in Series 12 was Merka, crushed by Rock. And the last beast stand in Series 3, I believe, was Tusk. That was at the end of the round, actually. Killed by Elik. Um, so, very satisfying, that was. Eighth place is Series 2. The last beast there was Sultra, killed by Rock. Rock hates these guys. Uh, and 7th is Series 8. Series 8. Balisk. Killed by Torpix. And next is Series 11. Killed by Crestal. Serpio was. Um, and another beast that was killed in Round 4. Series 10. Master of the Beasts. Killed by Carnivora. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> four seasons get eliminated in the same round. Um, kind of crazy, really. And they were all back to back as well, because uh, Rock versus Sultra, that was the first one, followed by Torpix versus Balisk, Crestor versus Serpio, then Carnivora versus Noctilla. So, so we're down to five seasons, and I believe it was five beasts remaining. So yeah, um, fifth place was Series Ten, uh, no. Four seasons remaining, five beasts remaining. Then uh, fourth was the uh, only one series got eliminated from that. Actually, fourth is series five. Um, Shade of Death. Rock was the last one standing, killed by Crestor. Uh, three series, three seasons remaining in the top three, and third was series one. Last beast standing was Ferno. It was killed by Torpix. And now we're down to the final two, final two beasts as well. Second place was Series 7 and first was Series 9. The winner was Torpix, final beast to be killed was Crestor. Um, and now when I, I didn't even sort this out anyway. Uh, so I'll give you ninth. Uh, this is going to take a while. Uh, you two, you four, five, you five are definitely the top five. Uh, so eighth. Yeah, um, let's give you. Actually, let's just give you seventh because you were cringy. Uh, <laughs> sixth because you were brutal. Um, and the rest were just great. I'll give you fifth. <clears throat> fourth because people would hate me if I got that any higher. Uh, third, second, first. Okay, there we are. Okay, so I I officially gave them rankings now. Sorry about that slight confusion, but um. That list, basically, which uh, this list I was actually meant to do in the final episode of Battle of the Beast, but I may or may not have forgotten.
Oops. Uh, so now this is just ranking my top 10 favorite battles from that series. And this is my opinion, as I said. So if your opinion is different, please in the comments below what your favorite battle was. And let's get right into this. So coming in 10th place, we're going to have Naga the Sea Monster versus Balisk the Water Snake. Now this one is actually one of my favourites because it had my favourite water beast versus a beast which I wasn't too fond of at the beginning of the tournament. And when I realised there's no way Naga can win that fight, um, I just realised Balis can make it really far. If he gets a good victim in round 3, which he did, um, Balis can make it all the way to round 4, probably round 5. Unfortunately he didn't make it to round 5 but... Realising that Balisk can actually do great damages to this great, uh, make a great dent in this tournament uh, for such an underrated beast is actually a good thing. Um, round one victim for Balisk was Solak, which I was debating on putting on here, but that wasn't really a great battle because uh, I actually can't remember it. Ninth place is probably going to be a surprise for some of you. Uh, Pardon me. Uh, Vespic versus Carnivora. Now this battle was unfortunately where I had to say goodbye to Vespic, my favourite beast of that tournament anyway. Um, Realising uh, when I saw this matchup that Lucas gave me, I was upset. And also realised that Vespic will, should had to die because there's no way she can beat Carnivora. When Carnivore has a heat breath which can burn Vespic alive. Um, not to mention Carnivore had the size advantage. And with Vespic being unable to have a swarm help her. It's kind of a one-sided fight that was. But I gave what I think was a good end to Vespic. And rather fitting as well. I was the base on putting Vespic versus the mixers here as well. But it edged out over Naga versus Balisk. Uh, eighth place is Hawkite versus Kronos, another round two fight, and this one I and for this fight I went in pretty confident, knowing that Kronos is going to win, and yet I somehow manipulated it for Hawkite to win by having Hawkite create a tornado that sucks Kronos in, and Kronos just get hit and battered by so many things, including blades of grass that ultimately killed Cronus and then having Hawkeye I think snap Cronus's neck pretty brutal uh but yeah that's where I realized the wait Hawkeye's actually pretty brutal in these in this tournament uh not when he um not when she disemboweled Epos or anything just when she killed Cronus that's why I was like that's a pretty aggressive beast uh seventh place is Probably most cringy out of all of these battles. Uh, Koba versus Kamar. Uh, <laughs> well, Kamar versus Koba for going numerically. Um, this one, I wouldn't say it's cringy because of the fight. I'll say it's more cringy because of what I was doing in between the fight. Um, it was really weird. I don't know what was going through my head back then. Um... All I know is I'm not doing that now, and if Koba or Kamar ever get into any more fights, either against each other or not, I would um, be a bit more normal when it comes to giving them fights, where, where it comes to giving them fights that I think they deserve doing. Um, but when it came down to it, I realised that I did like the fight as... When Koba gave me the idea that hey, you could just change the arena, making the arena a whole bunch of different things. I brought that back in a later battle I'm going to be talking about. Um, and then when it came to the end, where Koba was disguised as Mortax and having what was Koba, but Mortax dragging his scythe along the ground like um, a gladiator would when they're about to finish someone off, is an effect is this effect I, that I created in my mind, which I loved a lot, and I brought back in a later fight in the series. Um, this one was by far the most effective method of that effect, and um, I think it was a really good end to command that fight. Even though it was round one, it was a good round one fight, and by far the best one. Uh, sixth place is a round three fight, actually. 
Hawkeye versus Carnivora. Um, now, <laughs> this one, the one that I kind of aimed to win from the beginning, did win. Carnivora, I wanted to win, thought she would win, and was did win. Um, the thing that actually boosted it up was that I made Hawkeye so brutal in that fight. Where as soon as she came out of that chamber, she charged straight for Carnivora, creating a hurricane, sucking Carnivora in, knocking her unconscious, and scratching and clawing and pecking at her repeatedly. Carnivora got back up, shook Hawkeye off, blasted her with a heat breath, and then just started doing the same thing. Um... It's a bit simple compared to other fights, but to me, it was a very gruesome fight, and it was a rather quick one, thinking about it as well. Uh, fifth place is a round two fight, Sultra versus Koba. Now, this one was the most anticipated fight in round two, um, from Lucas's perspective anyway, and, and mine. Uh, and it was probably a great fight, and it was. I made it a great fight. I wasn't being cringy like I was for the last Cobra fight, uh, but um, I did take a page out of that fight's book, though, and essentially done the same thing by making Sultra go to different locations whilst Cobra was disguised as something else to kill Sultra. And little did I know, I that, that fight was out before episode 3 of series 7 of the Lynxy series where Cobra disguised herself as a tiny monkey to torment Sultra. Go to episode 3 of the Lynxy series and you'll find that a monkey is tormenting this guy called Apex which was actually kind of weird when I realised they came out at roughly the same time. <laughs> so uh, kind of a mind link that me and Lucas had there. Um, I'm not sure what he would call it but it's pretty damn weird. Um, and that fight, I also brought back the uh, effects of Koba dragging something along the ground ready to kill his, vic his victim. Because Sultra was like on the ground, pinned, well not really pinned down, but really weak, about to die. Uh, the Emperor gives the thumbs down, Koba smiles, drags his claws along the ground ready to kill Sultra with one swipe. Koba lets his guard down with his overconfidence, looked straight in Sultra's eyes, while Sultra did the same thing, looking into... Well, Sultra did the same thing, looking into his eyes. Turning Koba to stone, Sultra looked back up at the Emperor, thumbs down, got her whip, wrapped it round Koba's body and arms, pulled, breaking it. Uh, break it. Okay, uh, so that's how I say breaking. Okay, got it. Um, breaking it up completely. Uh, that was a great fight, and even though I tried recreating the finishing blow from Sultra in the round 3 fight, I don't think I did as good as a job. Uh, so this is by far the best fight that Sultra was in, and the best fight that Koba was in, actually, because Koba died in that one. Uh, moving on to 4th place, another round 3 fight, and this one is probably the most um, debatable with the winner. Uh, there were a few people that understood why I gave this one the win. And there were some people, including Lucas, that was pissed that I killed off one of the, this guy. Uh, this fight was Silva versus Serpio. And, uh, uh, I don't know why, but so many people hated me because Serpio won that fight. I know Serpio's from a bad series, I said that so many times before, but I had to give credit where it's due. Serpio just, I saw winning more fights than Silva. Um, anyway, what's done is done, Silva died, Serpio died to later in that tournament anyway. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, but I think the reason why I liked that fight is that um, in all the fights that Serpio was in actually, his wings got snapped off. Um, but with this fight, Serpio's wings didn't just get snapped off. But Serpio, because Sil when Serpio was being able to fly, Silva was held, hold on, held on tight to, crest to Serpio's tail, clawing at it, making his way up to um, kill Serpio in the sky, where he'll he just plummet down and Silva will be riding him down to the ground. 
And what Serpio did was pull an Aaron Rolston and snap the, oh, well, basically use his mouth and break the tail, his tail off, causing Silver to fall down. But Silver pounced off the tail, ready to grab onto Serpio. But Serpio saw that coming, does a twist, and knocks Silver down to the ground with his wings. Um, that was a part of that fight which I liked a lot. And then um, where Silver just plummeted down into the icy lake, where he came out frozen, and his um, fur being, well, not really frozen, but really cold and wet, his fur being all wet and um, soggy, being unable to take the cold, Serpio shot an ice beam from his eye, freezing Serpio Silver up, and then um, eventually Sil Silver broke out, but then Serpio done a neck snap uh, towards the end of that fight, which um, was a rather simple end, but I think the build-up to that fight, making it a really close one, is what I liked most about it, especially that other Aaron Rolston part. Um, if uh, these two ever fight again, I think the results may be different, but then again, they may not be. Um, I will get... I will get persuaded by Lucas to make Silver win that fight, uh, most likely anyway, um, but to my, I best hope that they don't get into another fight again, because I still think Serpio would win. Third place, we have actually the second to last fight in, that, in this series, and that's Ferno versus Torpix. Uh, this fight was actually a really good one. Um, Torpix and Inferno were both great beasts throughout that this entire tournament. Uh, Inferno killing rather intimidating beast being... Uh, this, no, he didn't kill Noctilla. Uh, he killed some Linker, Fang, uh, another beast I'm forgetting about. Uh, skipped round four, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed only three beasts. Uh, Sorry, she, he killed four beasts, skipped round five. He killed Elik. Uh, who else did he kill? Um, he killed uh, Fang. He killed uh, Elik and he killed... Um, damn, I forgot his name. Linker. Uh, but what else did Ferno kill? That is something that I can't remember. Um, all I know is it's not the favourite of any of, my, of the seasons here, so uh, I actually do not know. I think probably it was uh, from Series 9, might be. If so, what it was, I don't know. Perfono got a fair amount of kills. Torpix, up to that point, got six, five kills. Um, so one more than Inferno, and it was a great, really close fight. Um... Inferno being fire resistant, Torpix being acid resistant. Um, I gave the edge to Torpix so because um, typically, since snakes are reptiles, they're cold blooded, meaning heat is quite good for them. If Torpix went against Blaze, it may be a different story. But um, I think next time I do Battle of the Beast tournament with these beasts anyway which will be the all generation, the entire series, all of them. Um, I I best, I really want to see Torfix get killed off rather early or not to make it to the top because I'll let's see a different beast make it personally. Uh, I don't have a preference because I don't know what would make it actually. It depends what the matchups are. Um, but Torfix did great in that battle and made it to the finals. Uh, second place is, for the second best fight is Crestor versus Serpio. Now I'm sure you're seeing a theme here. Like, <laughs> just have a fight from one of the finalists and have a fight from the other finalists, which is Crestor versus Serpio. This fight was a great fight for so many people, where they got to see the Slayer of Silver, the Wild Terror, get killed by Crestor. Um, and this one was a great one. Um, before this fight was announced, though, uh, Lucas did message me saying, um, you best hope that you make S S Serpio die in a pool of blood. Well, he didn't say pool of blood. He said, um, have Serpio covered in a pool of crimson. So not necessarily die. Well, 
Actually, yeah, he did say die, but he didn't say there had to be in that round. Uh, so Serpio could have easily made it. <laughs> but um, he didn't actually say which beast's blood. That is what I took advantage of and made Serpio get drenched in Crestle's blood when Serpio cut Crestle's underbelly. But Crestle was able to stay alive long enough to... Um, to um, knock Torpix over with his claws, snap the wings, and slash at Serpio, shoot acid into the sky, landed in all around the arena, hitting Serpio, so melting him down to just very weak. Crestor got up to Serpio and just used his head to just smash his head repeatedly in Serpio, smashing Serpio into millions of pieces. Um, and like I said, in a pool of crimson, like I promised to Lucas. Uh, I hope that fight was um, a good revenge for Silver. Uh, I don't know if it was a good one, but I liked it. I personally did. And going on to number one, I'm sure you know what it is because it's, I think, the best fight. Crestor the Crushing Terror versus Torpix the Twisted Serpent. The final battle of that series. Of this series, anyway. And it was a close one. Because I couldn't decide which beast could win. Because they're both just as good as each other. And both being acid resistant. Meaning their main ability had to be used for something else. Uh, their main ability is completely useless. Um, so what I ma did was. I made um, Crestor and Torbix go at each other. Ripping chunks of flesh and scales out. And then ultimately have them both shoot acid into where they opened the wound into the insides of their body. For Torpix, it was the underbelly that Crestor torn open, and for Torpix, it was the top head of Crest, the the back of Crestor's head that he opened. They both shot acid into it, and unfortunately for you Crestor lovers, Torpix's acid was better and melted Crestor's skull. Um, but I may I added some dramatic effects there where they both collapse to the ground and after what seems like an eternity, one beast rose and slivered back into his cave. And then with the music um background being We Are the Champions, I announced the winner of the tournament being Torpix the Twisting Serpent. And um it was a great battle throughout that, actually. Um I believe that for most of that video actually the entire most of that video most of it was a battle which is what i aim to do but for some of them i don't really manage to do that at all um now that is my ranking for my top 10 favorite battles of battle of the beast season one uh now i'm not going to do my top 10 least favorite because i don't really want to talk about it i don't really have a lot that i don't like um, one that will be the worst, though, is the one that was a matchup but didn't have a battle. And that was Vigrash versus Karaka. Uh, <laughs> it was obvious which one will win. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So please feel free to leave in the comments below what your favourite battle was of Season 1. And um, please leave in the comments below why, you've, why it is your favourite. Um... What I believe Lucas's favourite was was Fang versus Ferno because it was a good good matchup and a good battle. And rather conveniently, it was the first battle of round one. But it was the thirty third battle of round one. Book one is Ferno, book thirty three is Fang. And that is something that I found kind of hilarious when I first saw it. Uh so that's kinda of convenient. Anyway, um with that being said, that's all for this time. If you like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for sticking with me for babbling on for God knows how long. And I'll see you next time.